Comrade Chairman and Comrades. First of all, I'd like to thank the Trades Council for having the common sense to invite a moderate leader <laughs> like myself. Forty years ago, I stood in this area amongst 15,000 Birmingham workers. Workers who were fed up at seeing miners battered on the picket lines outside Salt Lake Oak Works. Miners have been on strike from the beginning of January 1972. And they were in need of aid. We asked the workers in this city for support. And I make no apologies for saying on that occasion to the Transport and General Workers Union and to the AEU, we didn't want pound notes. We wanted them on strike down at Salt Lake Gates to give us not moral but physical support in a struggle that we had to win. I said on that occasion, you've got a choice. You can either stand on the sidewalk and watch what's happening, or you can join us and march into history. And in my words, you can become immortal. To the eternal credit of the workers in Birmingham, they joined the miners on the 10th of February, 1972. Yay! On that day, everything I believed in as a trade unionist and as a socialist crystallized. Workers were not merely supporting a struggle on their own behalf. Workers were supporting their brothers and sisters who were in struggle. A struggle against not an employer, but a struggle against the state. Today is important, 40 years on. But it is only important if we learn the lessons of what happened in 1972 and translate that into 2012 and the 21st century. We are facing the most vicious attack on our living standards in living memory. Unemployment is at an all-time high. Don't believe the figures published by this rotten government. It's not 2.6 million. The real figure is around 8 million between the age of 16 and 65 who can't get a job. Deprivation, degradation is all around. We're facing a situation with unemployment on the one hand and homelessness on the other. The simple solution is to put three quarters of a million unemployed building workers to work to build houses, to build schools, and to use the economic well-being that is possessed within our nation. We've got an education system and a government not only at odds, but diametrically opposed. I find it the height of hypocrisy for government ministers and above all for Labour politicians who got free education in their day to tell youngsters today they've got to pay to be educated. The only country in Europe 
that's got that rotten policy. And above all, of course, the health service, the pride of the world. Untouched for years, the creation of a miner and are in Bevan. But what a simple message. A health service available, free of charge, at the time of need and upon demand. I stand firmly behind the policy of getting rid of private health care, getting rid of all their system of privatisation and having a national health service that does a job of looking after human beings. I also want to see the regeneration of our society. Forty years ago, we not only had the historic event at Salt Lake Gates, we had an economy based 80% in manufacturing. Today, we have an economy based 20% in manufacturing. We've seen the destruction of steel, of coal, of shipbuilding. Indeed, engineering, light and heavy. Look around you. This city has been decimated as a result of the politics of capitalism. I don't want Ed Miliband to talk about a fairer form of capitalism. I've got a message for Mr Miliband. I want to bring down capitalism and replace it with socialism. You can't compromise with a system that creates inequality and injustice. You can only change that system and bring about a system of society where real compassion and understanding are the order of the day. I know what happened at Salt Lake because I was here. I saw what working class solidarity really means in action. Workers who turned out on that day lit a beacon. They showed the way that working people can bring about change. I know that you know that this government, yes, and the Labour Party, hypocritically talk about support when there's demonstrations and strikes provided they're in Poland, Czechoslovakia, or some other country, but not here. We're facing anti-trade union laws. Well, we didn't build this movement as a result of complying with laws that said we couldn't do things. We only built our movement because we resisted. The suffragettes didn't win the vote for women because they compromised. They won the vote because they defied that which wasn't just. I'm proud to be here today to thank people who turned out not just on the 10th of February 1972, but also to pay tribute to a number of people who did outstanding jobs in helping miners who were struggling for the first time since 1926 for justice. People like, yes, Frank Waters, who played a, a tremendous role in this city, and Moira Simmons, the Secretary of the Labour Party, that came together in working class solidarity to help Britain's miners. I remember speaking to three meetings in one day after we had finished that day on the picket line. I addressed the vehicle builders 
I address the Transport and General Workers Union with Alan Law and Nicky Bridge, who turned out tremendous support for the miners who were down here at Salt Lake. And then I spoke to the workers of the AEW in the boring, aptly named Yes, and I told them they had that chance. That chance that would come about once and they could become part of real working class history. I recall one member on the platform saying, I think, Arthur, we've got one problem. There's one chap in here who normally always speaks against taking industrial action. And I prepared myself for some criticism or some comment that would be negative. After I'd finished speaking, true to form, this man stood up and I was ready to defend my position. And he said, and forgive the accent, I've only got one question, Brother Scargill. <laughs> what time do you want us there? <laughs> I learned after the meeting, he had four brothers all working in the mining industry and all on strike. And he understood the need for working class solidarity. You know, it's interesting. Here in 2012, 40 years on, I'm slightly older than I was then. <laughs> but I'm more committed now than I've ever been in my life. I know that if we're going to resist and the attack on pensions, we've got to do it in a united way. I'm sick and tired of listening to trade union leaders say we can negotiate a compromise, we can do a deal on our pensions. There's no deal as far as I'm concerned and any union that does the same thing of putting the pension schemes into insurance companies ought to have their heads examined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see insurance companies collapsing all over the world. The reason's simple. The rotten, corrupt system known as capitalism is falling about. It's got no answer to the problem. They've given 325 billion pounds to the banks. Why didn't they give it to the unemployed, to the people with mortgages to pay back the banks? And if they want a solution to the banks, take them into public ownership. Take the transport system back into public ownership and control. You know, I like to think that my words are moderate. They are. I am a supporter of the person that gave birth to the political party that I now lead, the Socialist Labour Party. That party was founded not by me, but by the legendary James Connolly in 1903. And I want to conclude by paying tribute to the workers of Birmingham for their historic stand on the 10th of February 1972 by learning the lessons and transforming them and putting them into action in 2012 and the 21st century. And I want to do so by quoting the words of Connolly, who in my view summed up what a socialist should be and what he should do. 
He said this. Some men, faint-hearted ever see, are programmed to retouch, and will insist, whenever they speak, that we demand too much. Tis passing strange, yet I declare, such statements give me mirth, for our demands most moderate are. We, we only want the earth. earth. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah.